Hello, everyone. The first episode about shopping at the local flea market was well received by many, so today there will be a continuation. At the flea market, I always try to find either old and unusual items, in one way or another, related to electronics. For my collection, or devices that I intend to use in some projects in the future. In this video, I will show you the purchases, 90% of which I made in one visit to the local flea market. Let's start with the most expensive and interesting purchase. This is a stabilized DC power supply near BPM4, the Elian Civilian Radio Station. Old school design and high reliability, waterproof. The casing, you could say, is on little, except for the fact that the covers are removable. The unit weighs over 6 kilograms. On the front panel, there are a couple of fuses, output terminals, and a power switch with an indicator. Regarding the casing, I think everything is clear. I just didn't mention that it is made entirely of duralumin and has extremely high strength. At the same time, it serves as a cooling radiator for the powerful power switches located at the back. The source provides. 4. Powering the radio station. The stated maximum current is only 2. A. But don't jump to conclusions. I should note that this power supply has many modifications, and the schematics can vary greatly. Unfortunately, I was unable to find the complete schematic for my specific unit. The power transistors, and there are three of them, are located under protective caps. These are also the pressure washers. Another transistor is located inside the case. But to be honest, I was too lazy to find out if it's a power transistor or if it's in the pre-output stage. These are silicon and quite powerful transistors. KD803. Under them, sealing rubber rings are installed for moisture protection. The collector current of each transistor is 10A. The power dissipated on the collector is 60W, meaning the power unit has a significant safety margin. By unscrewing the covers, we can peek inside the power supply, and this is where it gets really interesting. First of all, there's the perfect cleanliness, which is not surprising. The unit has enhanced dust and moisture protection. You can notice sealing rubber rings on the covers. Inside, there are two boards. One of them has a bunch of low-resistance resistors. The power transistors are connected in parallel to increase the total current, and these resistors are balancing resistors connected in the emitter circuits of the transistors. The control is built on the second board. Reference voltage source. Here it's simple, in the form of a regular Zener diode. Next are the amplification stages. The power supply is equipped with short circuit protection. Low resistance resistors connected in parallel are used as the current sensor. The wiring is neat, everything is in threads. Overall, it's beautiful. We have several power capacitors, specifically three of them, each 2000 F50V. The unit is simple, yet reliable and can be easily repaired if needed. The components here are not scarce. The rectifier is built on 410 amp KD242 diodes. They are also well cooled thanks to the casing. The power transformer. It's a sight to behold. This is a TPP 3 to 9 with sealed windings for moisture protection. Practically silent, powerful, and reliable. As mentioned earlier, the rated output current of this power supply is only 2A, considering the output voltage. It turns out that the power is in the range of 25 to 30W. But I think you understand that this transformer is capable of much more. Let's see what this power supply can actually do. I load it with an electronic load and slowly increase the current in steps of 100 Ma A. The unit operates without any issues. The stabilization is quite good. The power transistors, you could say, do not heat up at this current. More precisely, they are well cooled thanks to the massive casing. When trying to draw more, the unit goes into protection mode. It also handles short circuits calmly. To be fair, I gradually increase the current. However, if you immediately load the unit with a load that consumes two or more amps, the unit will immediately go into protection mode. Of course, you can outsmart the protection by reducing the resistance of the current sensor, and the output voltage can easily be made adjustable. So, with enough determination, you can turn this source into a simple lab power supply. Or the charger. Well, and then there are these little things. 
those in the know will immediately say, so what's the big deal about that? These are old Soviet high-power telestores. But that's not quite the case. I have a lot of telestores, including more powerful ones, and as it happens, they are not particularly relevant to me at the moment. First, I also thought they were telestores, but after looking at the marking, something caught my eye. The inscription is 100, which stands for a thyristor symmetrical or simply a triac. A regular thyristor can only operate in one direction, whereas a triac allows full control of both half waves of the AC sine wave, as it is symmetrical, and it is precisely based on a triac that you can build a full-fledged dimmer, which will allow you to adjust the mains voltage from zero to maximum. A triac can be imagined as two thyristors connected in reverse parallel. In general, these beauties are rated for a current of 160A. With their help, you can build power regulators for tens of kilowatts. Of course, this is the USSR, and everything here is according to GOST. The power wire, well, as you can see, is very serious. Rated at 160, and it will handle the current without any problems. And those who have worked with Soviet power equipment know that they have a huge power reserve. They can be integrated into power supplies, into welding machines for current regulation. Use it as an analog of a powerful starter, that is, purely as a switch, and so on. In general, I'll save them, maybe they'll come in handy someday. The cost is 600 rubles for a pair, and it's worth it. Definitely worth it. Try to find an imported equivalent with the same quality. The price will be much higher. Next, a couple of these little toggle switches. Two PPN45 and V45M. I have several of these switches, but seeing a couple more at the flea market, I couldn't resist. Considering they were asking only 100 rubles for the pair. What makes them interesting? First of all, they are power switches. You simply can't find imported equivalents for such current, considering the size. This small toggle switch can operate at currents of 35A. The double toggle switch to PPN45 has two working positions and a neutral middle position. Originally, these switches were developed for military equipment, and they have appeared several times in my videos. Those who are familiar with them know that the old models of such switches had a tip with a luminescent compound containing the radioactive nuclide radium-226. These samples, however, are relatively new and non-radioactive. The areas of application are already clear. I forgot to mention that these switches are designed to work in low-voltage circuits. And also, for example, this switch contains a gram of pure silver in the small one. And I have come across this thing at the flea market before, but didn't see the point in buying it. But now I have a project brewing for an automatic bath for etching printed circuit boards. And this thing will be quite handy. This is a Soviet aquarium compressor powered by the mains. It has a power regulator and works perfectly. I could, of course, buy a similar compressor from China. But it's not the same. Why buy Chinese when you can get a Soviet one? Which is much more reliable and even cheaper, if, of course, you buy it at the flea market and not in a store. Well, since we're here, let's open it up and see how it's built. The design, yes, is simpler and more reliable. A primitive pump, a lever with a permanent magnet at the end, and an electromagnet powered directly from the mains. Thanks to the fact that the coil's power supply is alternating, the permanent magnet will oscillate. The power adjustment is also ingeniously simple. It is implemented using a ballast variable resistor, which strictly limits the current and is connected in series with the coil. A very reliable wire wound variable resistor is used. 3 watt resistor PP3-40. Apparently, this compressor is practically new. It works perfectly. It cost only 70 rubles because the seller didn't know if this device was working. And this is probably the best purchase of this visit. Next, a couple of analog meter heads. A DC ammeter for 10A and a voltmeter for 25 volts X10, which means 250 volts. I have always valued analog instruments. This time, I was looking for a voltmeter and a DC ammeter that were the same size and appearance for an old-school power supply, and I found them. The voltmeter has access to the voltage divider at the back. It can be adjusted to virtually any voltage, so I thought I would modify it for a lower voltage, but I didn't notice that this voltmeter is designed for alternating current. 
However, even considering this, it can be modified without much trouble to work in direct current circuits. Well, or it can be used as a network fault meter. That's an offset. The cost is 350 rubles for a pair. And actually, that's expensive for our flea market. They used to be half the price. But lately, compact indicator heads have started disappearing from the shelf. And it's hard to find a pair with a similar appearance these days. There are plenty of large ones, but small ones are rare. That's why I got them. Another point, on the voltmeter as I mentioned earlier at the back, we have a pair of S2-29V resistors, and these are high precision resistors with an error margin that can be up to 1%. A small thing, but a nice bonus. When I come across an obscure box at the flea market that has a power cord and says made in USSR, I buy it, regardless of what it is. It's like a box of surprises, you never know what's inside. Judging by the outputs and sockets, it's clear that it's some kind of power supply, but it's unclear what it's for. Opening it up will reveal the truth. Inside, everything is Soviet-style, but somehow unusual. Let me explain why. A regular small power network transformer, a smoothing capacitor, and a couple of rectifier diodes. Moreover, the diodes are very powerful and pressed into a heat sink. Also, pay attention to the secondary winding of the transformer. It is made with several parallel strands of wire of quite a large diameter. This means that it is a fairly powerful, but most likely low voltage power source. Someone has bitten off the power cord. We restore everything and connect it to the network, but not directly, rather through, for example, a low power incandescent lamp. You never know, the transformer might be burnt out. In general, the lamp is needed to limit the current and avoid a big bang if the transformer secondary is shorted. Seems like everything is working. The output voltage is only a few volts. I don't know where such a power supply can be used. I only needed the case for another soldering station project with a micro soldering iron. This case is perfectly suited for these purposes. It has plenty of space and compact dimensions. And this is a real find, a network fan with a full 18 watts. I'll say right away that it was bought for 100 rubles. And seeing it, I immediately realized that it was from a welding inverter. This is the back part of the inverter case with a rectifier in, a hole for the power cord. The motor is relatively high speed, 2600 revolutions per minute. The size is just right for my homemade exhaust fan. Right now, there's a fan from a computer power supply, and it's slightly insufficient. And this one will be quite handy. There was no opportunity to test it on site, so I was buying a pig in a poke and decided to haggle with the feller. Initially, they were asking for a whole 300 rubles for it. In general, the first power-up was through a lamp, and it works. Considering its monstrous appearance, it's quite quiet. Yes, a similar fan can be bought at any hardware store, but definitely not for 100 rubles. So this is a very successful purchase. Well, and then on to the small stuff. A good 20 amp shunt for an ammeter. A shunt with a 75 MV drop and a tolerance of just half a percent. Very good, reliable Soviet. The shunt is a bit rusty, but W40 will fix everything. Coils from magnetic starters. I always buy them as winding wire and I recommend you do too. It's cheaper than buying winding wire, and the lacquer coating here is better than the nameless wires from the store. In general, a proven topic. Here you can buy such coils at the price of regular copper scrap. Winding wire in the store is much more expensive. Power, outlet, or connector. I don't even know why I need one like this. It only costs 100 rubles. This is, most likely three-phase, designed for use in low voltage circuits. Current of 25 amps. Condition is new. I don't know where it can be used, but oh well. It's definitely worth the money. Made, of course, in the USSR. Well, that's about it. If you want a continuation of this series, please leave feedback in the comments. If you like the video, don't forget to rate it and share it with your friends. Well, I'll say goodbye for now. As always, this was Kazian K, with you. And until we meet again, goodbye.